Are you doing thousands of crunches to build a strong core? Comment below if this is what you have been taught to do um, because I know that it's something that I um, have been doing as well in the past. But today I'm going to share why you should actually stop doing uh, sit-ups and what to do instead in order to build a strong core that is going to keep you health healthy, prevent injury, and also perform at your best. So who has been doing sit-ups? Comment below if this is something that you've been doing. Um, for anybody who's new, my name is Allie. I'm a Christian health and fitness coach. And so I just want to welcome you to Cross Training Women. Um, after studying and following the best fitness coaches in the industry, I've learned that a lot about um, the body and have made significant changes to my training. And training my core is definitely one of them. Like I said, I used to do lots of sit-ups and while they can help kind of give you that shredded six-pack abs look, doing endless amounts of crunches will not give you a strong core. And in fact, they can injure your lumbar spine and cause low back problems, which is why I ended up giving them up a while ago and then now training my core in a way that it was designed to functionally do which um, is to stabilize your spine and to transfer force between your lower and upper body. So not necessarily to produce force. Um, so your core is not just your rectus abdominis or your six pack abs, which is what people tend to just focus on and train that, but it consists of several muscle groups that all need to be trained and involved in order for your core to function properly and optimally. So your core muscles work together to be more of anti-rotators, anti-flexors, anti-extensors than they are to be uh, flexors, extensors, and rotators. So they are meant to, they are built to resist and absorb movement. And as I mentioned, to transfer power between your lower and upper body. So if you want to maximize power and stay healthy, then for example, in a golf swing, you should actually prevent rotation in your trunk, specifically your lumbar spine, and allow your hips and shoulders to do the work. Um, so this is kind of a new concept in the fitness industry. So the way that trainers and coaches are programming core training is actually changing. And because I want to help you make your, your core strong, and um, train it in a way that it was functionally designed to do, I do not recommend or program things like crunches, Russian twists, or some of the other traditional ab exercises that you're used to seeing and probably doing yourself. And not only that, but as I mentioned, when you perform exercises like crunches, you are training spinal flexion. So spinal flexion is the bending over. And um, too much spinal flexion causes low back problems. So your lumbar spine or your lower back is primarily built for stabilization. So to stabilize your spine, it's not designed to flex or extend, so hyperextending your back um, or really rotate, only to a small degree, especially when you compare this to your thoracic spine, which is more of your middle to upper back, which is designed for more rotation. So when you perform thousands of crunches, you're training your brain how to be really good at rounding your lower back, which is basically doing exactly what you don't want it to do. So Stuart McGill, a doctor, um, he has a PhD in spine mechanics and is one of the leading experts in uh, you know, just spinal health, core stability, and he's really the go-to guy in the fitness industry and for professional athletes, especially when it comes to back health. Well, he's done extensive research on low back um, and just low back pain and has found that when it comes to lumbar flexion and extension, your spine only has a certain amount of flexion and extension cycles in it, meaning that um, performing lots of reps of sit-ups is a sure way to end up with low back pain or even herniated discs. And because everyone's anatomy is different, there's not really a specific number or set rule of how many flexion and extensions it takes for that to happen. Some people you know, might be able to go through hundreds of thousands of cycles with no 
um, negative effects, but some other people, you know, might only be able to go through half of that number and then end up with low back issues. So if you've done it for years without a problem, it doesn't mean that it's safe or healthy for your back. It could just be a matter of time. Um, I kind of see this and I've heard this analogy before too. It's similar to like smoking where, you know, some people can smoke for years without really seeing any negative effects or, you know, if they're really lucky, they could go their whole life without um, having any health issues. But, you know, for most people, it's going to catch up to them at some point and, you know, it doesn't take long for others to develop respiratory problems or um, even things like cancer. So um, sit-ups, another reason why I don't like them is that they train and reinforce bad posture. So you're drawing your pelvis closer to your rib cage. So you're basically like Quasimodo. So think hunched over with your shoulders rounded and forward. And we already spend so much time in this position like I'm doing right now. Um, where I'm bent over, my shoulders are rounded, and then when you're training on top of this, it can just make the problem even worse. But the good news is that you can reduce poor posture by programming in spine stabilization exercises and having a strong focus on correct posture when you're performing them. So the way to do that is through anti-core training. And I'm not saying, <laughs> I'm not anti-core training, what I mean is that it's anti-flexion, anti-lateral flexion, anti-rotation exercises, and combinations of both. Um, so I focus on a lot of variations of planks, side planks, dead bugs, bear holds, bear crawls, um, ab rollouts, farmer's carries, Turkish get-ups, um, chops and lifts, and even diaphragmatic breathing exercises. And you may be thinking, breathing, like, what the heck? But breathing, so your diaphragm, while its primary function is breathing, of course, it also plays an important role, though, in maintaining posture and core stability um, as part of your inner core unit. And most people aren't breathing correctly. So, yes, I even program in breathing exercises. Um, so this is what I do in my workouts and what I recommend that you do for yours if you want to build a strong, stable, and resilient core. So ditch the setups, ditch the Russian twist, um, ditch those little lateral side bends with the weight um, and other exercises with your abs that, you know, promote flexion and rotation in your lumbar spine. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's you know, it's up to you and how you want to train. You're free to train how you want. But my primary goal is to always help you to achieve your goal in the safest and most effective manner possible. And for me, that's core stability and anti-resistant um, movements. So I want to make it clear, though, that despite everything I said, your core does need to bend. It needs to flex. It needs to, you know, be able to move to the side and extend. We are not robots. So don't be afraid to flex or extend thinking that you're hurting your back. A healthy spine is able to do those things. So being able to bend down and touch your toes or even things in yoga like the cat-cow um, pose, like those are good and can be good for your back. But I would just be careful on loading or adding weight in training um, your spine in these positions. So if you have any questions about core training, please feel free to put them in the comments. Um, I would love to, you know, talk you through that this month. Um, I'm excited because I'm putting an extra emphasis on core training in my CTW membership program. Um, and I'm going to be following along, or I am following along with um, the women who are doing that. And so I'm excited to kind of see our results um, at the end of the month after putting a little bit more focus on core training. So, you know, if that's something that you're interested in doing, you want to build a strong core and you want to try it without doing thousands of crunches, then DM me or you can even um, go to crosstrainingwoman.com slash CTW membership. I can put that link in the com in the comments um, and you can sign up. It's, it's really not too late to start doing it. We are doing um, you know, five workouts per week. Uh, they each contain about three exercises 
um, per workout and you know over the month it's going to get progressively harder as we build more and more strength there so if you're interested let me know i'd love to add you to the group but i hope that you learned a lot about core training and maybe even kind of changed the way you think about it um so hopefully you know i can help you out maybe even help you prevent an injury down the road with your lower back so try to focus like i said more on those anti-core training exercises if you need uh, more help with that you have more questions please again send me a message leave it in the comments and i will get back to you but I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you guys next week.